it's October and I need to keep the vampires away. So garlic abound. Hello everyone and welcome back to the D-Hard House. My name is Alicia and I'm your host of this crafty channel here on YouTube. Welcome if you're new, welcome if you're returning. It's so good to have you here and it's so good to be back in functioning order. Yeah. Let me just tell you guys right off the bat, I got COVID in September. Yeah. <laughs> so this is my monthly video about what I make uh, in each month of the calendar year. And one of the things that affected me in the month of September was COVID. Yeah. Um, I went through the whole pandemic of not actually getting COVID. Um, and then I got it right when we were going back to school this year. So yeah, um, Michael got it first. Michael's my husband and he brought it home and shared it with me. Super nice sharing is caring, but no thanks. Um, yeah, he had a lot worse of symptoms than I did. I, I, I got a booster shot. He did not. So that may be why I had fewer symptoms um, than he did. But yes, we were not fully functioning humans for a um, good chunk of September. So that was a thing. Plus, I didn't want to be like touching everything. When, when Michael was sick and I wasn't, I didn't want to have like everything out to be exposed to germs so I was like you know just shut the door to the craft room and do not enter until everyone's feeling better and that was that was nice so it was like if I need something from that craft room it's just gonna have to wait until we're all feeling better so yeah that's what happened so I'm a little light on knitting content for for that reason, but also a couple other reasons. One, um, I knit a sweater and pretty much nothing else. So I did do a lot of knitting, but not on multiple projects. I was really monogamous for the month of September. The third reason is that um, it's fall time here in the Pacific Northwest. Um, I live in the greater Seattle area in Washington state. And um, it means a lot of st uh, vegetables and fruit are coming out of the garden, which means I have to do something with them. So <laughs> there has been a lot of canning that has been happening in this house and bread making and those sorts of things. So um, I haven't just been fiber crafting, but I've also been um, doing things in the kitchen. So I'm going to share those things with you folks in today's episode. So before I get into the um, finished objects for the month of September, uh, my birthday is in September. So uh, Michael got me a present as always. Um, but this year he got me, <laughs> show you this, it's so adorable. Um, I saw this in a shop in um, one of the shopping malls nearby. Actually, it's like the largest mall in Washington or something. Um, <laughs> but there's a, there's a store there that has, um, oh, I wish I knew the name of it. Um, but they're, they're handcrafted, like unique items. And uh, there's a lot of weaving. Um, and and um because there, there's rugs and skirts and shirts but they're all like handmade items and one of the handmade items is this guy <laughs> and 
they have these in like small, medium, and large. And large is like three foot tall standing on the floor kind of um, thing. But this is an alpaca and it's made out of alpaca fur, fur, hair, I don't know. Um, <laughs> so yeah, this little guy, you could, I don't know, okay, there we go. See his little ears are all hand stitched on here and he has eyes and a nose and he's got little tassels on and he's just the cutest little thing. Yes, he has legs. So he is made in Peru. Oh my God. <laughs> so this is uh, Ollie the alpaca and he's gonna hang out with me in my craft room and wherever. And Marjorie, my black lab, is not sure what to make of this guy because he smells like an animal, but he doesn't act like an animal. So, yeah. <laughs> so I have an alpaca, a miniature alpaca, uh, and that was my birthday present this year. <laughs> so I knit a sweater in the month of September, which is really good considering I had a sweater that was languishing for two years. So uh, <laughs> I just focused on this sweater a lot this month and just cranked it out. So the pattern is called Graceful Waves Tunic Sweater. Um, it is a free pattern. I got it off of Ravelry and it's a, it's a tunic style top as the name suggests. So it is uh, a long top with positive ease. So it's loose fitting, right? It's not a form fitted top. Um, it's got a bit of lace detail along the bottom edge, but otherwise it's just very simple. And I really like that about this sweater pattern. It's a classic it's it's a piece that can pair well with different um, pants that I have in my wardrobe and um, things like that so I thought oh this will be great so I knit a swatch yes I did knit a swatch and the yarn that I used is from Hobby Lobby it is uh, Baby B Sweet Delight Prince and the colorway is Puppy Kisses and this is um, you know not a natural fiber so this is 60% acrylic 40% polyamide it's plastic right? <laughs> um, and uh, it's it's the weight yarn called for by the pattern and um, I knit a swatch and my my number of stitches matched right the number of stitches in the four inches I should have wrote that down <laughs> um, but it it matched the gauge called for in the pattern what did not match is my row gauge so the number of rows right but the way the pattern is written it says knit until it measures this much so that wouldn't really matter. Um, or it wouldn't make that big of an impact. So what did matter is how many stitches in those four inches. Great, awesome. So I cast on, it's knit bottom up. Um, so you start with the lace at the bottom of the sweater and uh, you knit the front and the back separately because there's that split in the side, right? So you knit the front panel of lace, you know, cut the yarn, save that. Then you knit the back panel of the lace and then you start working in the round um, in stockinette. Easy, right? And you know, the pattern says to knit until it's this long 
from the bottom edge, which is great because I, I don't have to do any math at all on that row gauge, just it, it's gonna reach a certain length. Then you split for the sleeves, right? And you knit the front and the back, right? And then you bring them up here and um, it was just Kitchener stitch to join them. There's a little bit of a garter stitch at the top and I think that's a nice little detail. So it, it's a very easy uh, pattern to follow. I think this would be extremely beginner friendly. The, <laughs> but of course I ran into issues. <laughs> so I did swatch people and yet, this is too big. Um, yeah, so the gauge, um, when I measure it, the gauge here doesn't match my swatch when I was knitting. So it is too big. This pattern calls for, if I remember correctly, already eight inches of positive ease. So it is already extremely loose fitting. Mine has 12 inches of positive ease. 12. So basically it's the next size up, right? So when I put this on, you're gonna be able to see that. So first of all, the um, there is a little bit of garter on the edge of the sleeve here, but it keeps rolling under. And because this is acrylic yarn, um, it doesn't really block well. And I know that about acrylic, but I just, oh, I really wanted to use this yarn. Anyway, so, oh my goodness. Let me move the camera so I can show you the whole thing. Okay, so the top edge rolls, which of course is not my favorite, but okay. And this definitely sticks out straight, which, right, ugh, okay. So that's not very flattering. The edge rolls in. Now, these issues are definitely because uh, of my yarn choice, right? I should not have used acrylic. This sleeve opening is, more than I would have liked, but I was just following the pattern, right? I wanted to exactly follow the pattern. Okay, cool. It is long, right? I'm showing you. It completely covers my butt, which is longer than I thought it was. I didn't think it would completely cover my butt, but it does, which is, which is okay. I'm okay with the length. I mean, maybe I'd shorten it just a couple inches so it's not so much of a dress, but the big issue, is all of this extra. I mean, it's just, yeah. So I, it feels like uh, right now, um, I don't know, like a moo moo. <laughs> like, um, maybe some, maybe like a um, something you'd put on to paint, right? Like a just a big oversized cover to be doing something um, like painting. That's kind of messy, but you don't want to get stuff on your nice clothes and so it's just it's too massive I can't wear this thing this is I wanted to wear it to work in fact I really wanted to wear it on the first day of school I didn't have it done in time but oh my gosh this thing is too big so what do I what do I do with this you know what what do I do with this? And I did measure it, and it is, um, the measurements are for the next size up, right? So, 
option number one. See if it fits someone else and give it to them. But then I'm not super happy with like how the sleeves are behaving and stuff either. Option two, cut this, like take it in on the sides, which again, it's still acrylic yarn, so I'd have to do a lot of reinforcing for one, and that isn't really gonna fix the sleeve, this, this behavior here that's happening on the top of the sleeve right on the, the shoulder here so I don't know what I'm gonna do with this I have I have no idea I can tell you right now I don't want to rip the whole thing out because that's a lot of work and I woven my ends um I did have I did go to the store and buy a fourth ball uh, three balls should have been plenty with extra and I had to get a fourth ball and dip into it I, you can see I still have a bunch left but that was a sign that something was going wrong oh y'all I'm just so um you guys know, just a few months ago, I knit a bottom-up cardigan and had sizing issues as well. Uh, last month, I finished a top-down sweater, and it's fantastic. So, I think, number one, Alicia needs to stop knitting bottom-up things because I don't know how to make sure they fit, right? Um, especially when it's meant to have a bunch of positive ease because it's hard to know you know when you're trying on you have knit like four inches right and it's supposed to be the bottom of a sweater right so let's say I go okay let me put this on waist yarn and try it on to make sure it, it not only fits around me but has the correct amount of ease to it right what height do I put that strip at, right? <laughs> and how do I hold it so I'm not like accidentally stretching it this way or stretching? <sighs> so I think moving forward, I need to knit these patterns top down because then I could actually try it on, see the drape, see how it hangs, because also as, um, you know, the longer <laughs> this is, right, and the more weight it has, the more pull and stretch you have on those stitches, right? As opposed to just laying it flat and measuring, it's going to inherently want to stretch out more. So you can get more of an accurate measurement of how long your garment is. Anyway, definitely I feel like I need to make things that are top down, not bottom up. In the meantime, what am I gonna do with this? I have no freaking clue. I knit it, I had fun knitting it, uh, so I did already get that enjoyment out of it. I just, in its current state, I can't get any enjoyment out of wearing it. It is just not wearable. Um, yep, I do like the yarn. Um, I think that's another thing I need to do in the future is um, maybe not use acrylic. I have one, two, three, I have three sweaters I've made out of acrylic yarn and I love them. <laughs> uh, but this one I don't love. So, no, yeah, so I'm, I'm still okay with making sweaters out of acrylic but not ones that should be drapey, right? The acrylic sweaters that I have are more form-fitting and they do great for that. So I think I should stick to that. Anyway, so despite all of that, I still want this top in my wardrobe. I do, I, I really liked it. 
that's why I wanted to knit it in the first place is it has a place in my wardrobe and I would like to have it. So I'm tempted to try it again. Okay. Yeah, except this time modify it so I can knit it top down instead of bottom up so that I can try it on as I go. And not out of acrylic yarn, but out of a more natural fiber that's going to be more drapey and something I can block. So what about a cotton acrylic blend? Huh? And it has this beautiful, I'll show you the side so it doesn't have that tag, gradient to it. Oh. Yes, this is enough yardage. Um, it's not the weight of yarn called for in the pattern. Um, I have not gauge swatched at all, right? This is still an intact ball of yarn. Um, but I thought, oh my gosh, this could be really pretty. Now, because this yarn is thinner than intended, I would have to see what the fabric looks like, right? But, hmm, what do you think? And if I'm doing it top down, again, I could actually try it on. Plus, this is, this is a sleeveless shirt, and I like the length of this sleeve opening. So, I have a, a garment I can reference to uh, to get this measurement of something I already know I like and is wearable. Um, yeah, what do you think? So basically, you have two different prompts you can answer in the comments down below for the giveaway. Um, and they're both related to the Graceful Waves tunic sweater debacle <laughs> and so the first option is suggestions about what to do with this one and the second option is asking for suggestions about knitting another one right so suggestions on yarn um, suggestions on construction or whatnot <laughs> Or maybe your suggestion is move on. <laughs> so sometimes I did not want to be working on a huge sweater that was uh, even larger than I wanted it to be. Um, so of course I had a sock on the needles as well. So this is yarn from Hobby which is spelled H-O-B-B-I-I. -I. Um, this is a sock yarn. It is a um, wool nylon blend. <laughs> Escapes me. Um, and it's sparkle. So it does have a little bit of um, that sparkle material in it. And originally I cast on a sock that I was trying to do a pattern for. And this yarn has enough of a pattern in it, as you can see, that it makes um, a stitch pattern actually quite difficult to see. So I ripped that out and I made instead just a really basic sock uh, that has one by one ribbing on the top of the foot and of course stocking it on the bottom. So that way you can actually see the stripe detail going on in the yarn. So this is a shorty sock and I love my shorty socks. I wear them um, a lot, especially in the summer. And uh, so I did one by one rib around for 15 rounds and then my, my new favorite heel. <laughs> so this is an eye of partridge heel flap with a garter stitch edge. And then 
you know, gusset decreases down. And then a, um, a rounded toe. Yeah. So this is my first, this is my first sparkle. No, this is not my first sparkle yarn, but this is my first sparkle yarn knitting something for myself. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I, what was it last year? Um, ordered a bunch of yarn from Hobby, and so this is one of those that I'm trying out. And uh, yeah, I have the second sock on the needles. I just made it past the heel. Um, I'm now out of the gusset decreases, and uh, just working on this. And this project right here is the only knitting I have on the needles right now. Yeah. Um, I have a couple of bags of projects in the craft room. They are projects that I intend to rip out. I do not intend to continue them. So um, I need to do that. But basically, yeah, I've cleared down. I, I did the works in progress whip down and I got... Um, finished projects that I wanted to finish. I ripped out some projects already and I need to rip out a few more, but otherwise this is the only project, knitting project I have going right now, which is kind of cool. <laughs> um, yeah, so I have half of, um, half of a pair of socks. I have a sock, so I need to finish the other one. And I'm just slowly working on that as we watch TV. Um, I'm mostly spinning right now. And um, my spinning is in progress. And I, I didn't want to take it off the wheel and, and all that good stuff. So, plus it's something that I've been working on in October, not September. Um, it's one of those things I kept locked away in the craft room until we were all feeling better. Uh, and so now that we're feeling better, I'm working on it. So I have a good size garden in my backyard and I've been really enjoying, uh, we've lived in this house, um, two years now. It will be two years this month. And I've so I've had two growing seasons in the backyard to improve my vegetable gardening as well as flower gardening. I did start growing flowers this year. I have a little bouquet here. So I have been harvesting a lot of vegetables from my garden and I just want to share with you some of the things that I have made. Um, so the first thing was um, in early September, and that would be pickles. So I got a bunch of cucumbers out of the garden. So I have two, what size is this, a quart? Um, so I have two big jars with um, spear pickles. And then I also made some pickle slices because I like having pickles on um, burgers and sandwiches and just to eat them like chips. <laughs> so I have four of these. And so um, last, so a couple things I improved here or tried differently. I'm hoping they're improvements. I haven't tried these yet. Um, so my pickles I made last year were all soggy. Um, they were not crisp pickles, they were mushy. And I don't care for mushy pickles, so most of the pickles I made last year I ended up putting in the compost bin and not eating them because they were mushy. But I liked the flavor. Um, so I used pickle crisp this time, um, which is an additive, uh, and I don't have to soak these in vinegar for like a day or two before canning them. Um, you just throw in some pickle crisp. So we're going to see how that goes. 
they already look way better than the previous ones. The other thing I did differently and I did not intend was I used um, dried dill. So those are all the little green um, specks floating around are dried dill. Um, I wanted to use fresh dill, but I think the time that I was canning these, everyone must have been canning pickles because I went to three different grocery stores and no one had fresh dill. Yeah. So I went to the spice aisle and I bought a little container of dried dill and I used that instead. But you know what? I have a feeling it's going to taste better. <laughs> Isn't that weird? Anyway, so basically I have six, six jars of pickles, which should be plenty. And then, um, by mid-September, my cucumber plants were um, wilting, the leaves were turning yellow and brown, and the, the plants weren't making any more flowers. So by mid-September, those were out of the garden and done. So cool. So I did eat a bunch of fresh cucumbers as well, and that was really nice. Toss them in salads and whatnot. Well, then um, the tomatoes started picking up. So I picked my very first tomato, which was a little cherry tomato, in mid-August. And then it took like two to three weeks, really, for any of the other tomatoes to start going. So I... Um, I planted all of those plants at the same time because I knew I wanted to do canning. So I didn't want my harvest to be trickled out over time. I wanted kind of it all to come out at once so I could can it. Um, so uh, I watched a few videos on YouTube, no surprise, on canning tomato sauce first. And so um, I tried a recipe of tomato sauce that involved simmering tomatoes with garlic and onions. Um, and her recipe called for like cooking wine, but I didn't have any and I didn't feel like buying any. Um, and then running all of that through a food mill to get out the seeds and skin and stuff like that. And, um, and then water bath canning these, uh, the sauce. So that's what I did. So I have two, I think, I think two jars with that mixture of tomatoes, garlic, and onion. And then, yeah, and then this one is just tomato. So I didn't use garlic or onion. It's just tomato. I thought, why not try? So I've got three big jars of sauce. Then, um, I was like, okay, well, I don't just want all sauce. I want tomatoes as well, um, because I like making chili, and I love tomatoes on salads, and I don't care if they're fresh or canned. Um, I, will, I will toss them on. And I was also um, thinking, instead of specifically canning salsa and things like that, I could at least just can the tomatoes and I can always make salsa out of it later. So, um, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine of these jars of diced tomatoes. So I blanched the tomatoes. So I had them in boiling hot water for a couple minutes, then into ice water to peel the skin off. That's all that's for, is just to peel the skin off. And then I diced all these things up and then just canned them. Um, turns out when you're doing any of these tomato-y things, you have to add more acid to the mixture to actually, you know, get it acidic enough for food preservation. And um, 
what some folks use to do that is lemon juice, but the other thing is citric acid. And I already have a whole bunch of citric acid uh, from, from dyeing yarn <laughs> and dyeing fiber. So I just went in my craft room and pulled out my big old jar of citric acid, and there we go. <laughs> so, um, yep, so I have nine jars of diced tomatoes. And uh, yesterday, I picked a whole bunch of more tomatoes out of the garden, uh, made some of those jars of tomatoes, and I have sauce in the fridge, because I at least got through um, running the tomato sauce mixture through the food mill to remove the seeds and the skin and those things. Um, and by that time, it was like... 7.30 at night, and I didn't feel like water bath canning at that point. Especially since I have like 10 more pounds of tomatoes sitting on my counter right now, so I'll probably make more sauce and um, or more diced tomatoes and be able to water bath can those things together. So... <laughs> I'm pretty happy. Also, uh, I gave a bunch of tomatoes away at work because um, I didn't want them to go bad and I, oh gosh, yeah, I have way too many. <laughs> so, so I'm, pres I'm, so that has taken up a bunch of my time um, uh, preserving food, but it's been really fun. I'm learning a lot and um, we'll be able to enjoy these throughout the winter when I'm not able to grow plants outside. So that's been really fun. Um, side note, <laughs> or extension, uh, my four cotton plants that made it through to the growing season now have the, um, the start of cotton bowls on them. So they're still green and developing um, but once they are mature enough, they will crack open and, um, uh, they'll open up and I'll be able to actually pick the cotton. So I'm hopeful that there's still enough warmth and sunlight for them to get to that point. It's September, or it's October and I'm wearing a sleeveless shirt. It is going to be in the mid 70s today. today. Um, so it's still warm. Um, cotton plants like the weather to be at least 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So, I, I mean, while I, I'm ready for fall weather, I'm also like, just hang on just enough to give me some cotton. Um, so I don't, I don't know if it'll actually get there, but I'm hopeful that it will. Okay, so it's time to announce the winner of the giveaway for this month, um, which this month the prize is an actual physical prize, um, and so it's a bag that I made, D-Hard House Creations, that's the wrong way completely, <laughs> uh, and so it's got a zipper and a boxed bottom and it's the same size as this bag that I'm using for my socks and I just love this size for a one skein project. It just all fits in here really nicely. So um, the winner is going to be chosen randomly from the comments on the July and August makes video and that person is Nancy Morales. <laughs> so um, my prompt last time was, what's your favorite season and why? And um, Nancy says, um, just now getting caught up with you. Glad you had a nice vacation. Thanks for the retirement wishes and for the prize. She won last month as well. Um, we'll miss you at DFW, which is Dallas, Fort Worth, um, Fiber Festival. Yes, I totally wanted to go, but it was in September 
like right after school started so I couldn't I couldn't make the trip but I totally wanted to um it's finally back after two years of the of the pandemic um take care and hugs and yes so Nancy um please send me a Ravelry message and my uh, Ravelry name is down in the description box below and you probably remember it from last time. <laughs> uh, but send me a message with your address so that I can mail this prize to you. Um, and like I said, this has been locked away in my craft room, um, away from sick people. This is the first time I'm touching it <laughs> since then. Um, and I've sprayed it with Lysol like crazy. So, um, it should be good to go. I'm, I feel okay sending this to you. Um, but if you get it and want to spray it with Lysol too, I would totally understand. So, <laughs> so Nancy, congratulations. You are the winner of this month's giveaway. Um, so for the next giveaway, um, you have two prompts that you can respond to. Basically, you just need to leave a comment down below. But I'm looking for suggestions on what to do about this tunic sweater. Um, what to do with the, the one I've already knit that doesn't fit and possibility of knitting another one that does fit. <laughs> Um, so let me know in the comments down below ideas, suggestions, what you would do in this situation. Uh, that will really help me out. It is going to be another bag. So, <laughs> um, this one is going to be themed for um, Thanksgiving, which uh, here in the United States, Thanksgiving is in November and in Canada is in October so it seems like a good time to do this uh, <laughs> I just love this print uh, of this fabric and so <laughs> it's, um, this is one of my uh, older bags and uh, so it's got a box bottom on it so it will sit flat on the table and inside it's lined with Plaid because hello fall time um, and um, I even have a little um, little ring attachment inside here so you can clip um, you can clip your stitch markers on here or um, some folks like to have like a yarn I feel like that's really small for that though but like a thing to put your yarn through I don't like my project to get stuck in my bag, so I don't do that, but but there's a little clip in there to, for you to clip things on and a handle so you can carry this around more easily as we carry around all of our things to all of the places and need free hands sometimes. Um, yep. And I also like to... Um, if I can get back in the habit of knitting while walking, but I'll um, have my project in my ball of yarn in here and be knitting on like a pair of socks while walking. And so that can be really nice. But yes, it is Thanksgiving themed. And so um, we'll give this, a, I'll give this away on the next uh, monthly episode here. So all you have to do is comment down below and I would love comments that um, answer the prompts because I need help deciding what to do. <laughs> so I'll randomly pick a winner for, from the comments um, next month. And um, just so you know, this giveaway is open to everyone, everywhere. Um, no matter where you live, you can enter and I will, if you're the winner, I will ship it to you. <laughs> so stay safe, stay healthy, and enjoy your crafts, whatever they may be. See you next time. Bye!